Well, hello, scrappers. Welcome back to my channel. And yes, believe it or not, another video about my homemade impact mill. But actually, it's not so much about the impact mill itself as how I'm getting the dust out of it these days. I want to go through that. But for those who haven't seen the earlier videos on how I made an impact mill out of an old vibratory tumbler, I'll give you a quick look inside. And check out those earlier videos, by the way, if you're at all interested in this or need a quick and dirty impact mill. Oh, look at the dust coming out. But dust is a beautiful thing in this case, because that dust started out as incinerated IC chips. And I have been running a lot of incinerated IC chips through this thing. So how did I do it? Well, I just uh, filled it up with ball bearings. It's got... Oh, close to 200 ball bearings in it now of three different sizes. There's some one inch, there's some three quarter inch, and there's some half inch in there. And I'll tell you what, I let this thing run for a couple of hours with a load of IC chips in it, and I come back and it is full of dust. It does an amazing job of pulverizing the IC chips. I get a really, really fine grind, which liberates the bond wires nicely. I couldn't be much happier with it. The problem I was having was getting the dust out of it then. Um, I was using my little bucket shop back, which uh, the, the, a lot of dust was going around the filter and blowing out everywhere, which is yeah, I, not healthy for me, even wearing a mask. I'd get covered with the stuff. And I was worried that I'd be losing a little bit of gold in that dust. And you have to bear with me, it's very windy today. And believe it or not, I blew all the leaves out of here less than an hour ago. Like the wind is just blowing them back in all over the place. It's the leaf apocalypse season here. All the oak trees are dropping their leaves right now, and we're knee-deep in them, so... Anyway, so anyway, um, yeah, so I wanted a better way to get the dust out of here, capture the dust and everything, especially the bond wires, than I was getting with my little bucket back. So, I started scrounging around. I knew I had some equipment somewhere, it was just a matter of finding it, and I did. So, this is called a dust deputy. See if I can get you a better look at it here. It's called a dust deputy. It's basically a cyclone separator over a can. Now I picked this up uh, a few years back when the company I was working for at the time downsized and they got rid of a lot of equipment. I got it for free. What a deal. Well, I gave it to my stepson to use, but he hasn't been using it with his setup, so I borrowed it back. Maybe a permanent borrowing. Don't tell Joe. Anyway. Uh, I borrowed it back, and I've got it set up. Now, things don't quite fit right here. Um, I may eventually 3D print some proper um, some proper interconnects for these things, but for now, I'm just using a lot of tape on them. And uh, it's, it's, it's working pretty good. It, it, may, it may end up in the works just good enough department, and the 3D printing may never happen, but I don't know, maybe. My 3D printer is busy right now working on another project. It will be for a couple of days. But when it's free, eh, maybe I will. And then instead of using the little bucket back, I got my big 12-gallon uh, shop back here. I cleaned it all out this morning and put a brand new bag in it because I don't know if the bond wires are going to make it all the way over to that or if they're going to stay in here. I don't know. I'm hoping they're going to stay in here. And just the super fine dust is going to wind up over there. So I don't know yet. I have used this system and it works pretty well for getting the dust out of here. It's time to vacuum out another load. So let me uh, let me glove up and put on a mask even though there's really not much dust with this process anymore. Just in case I stir some up in this wind. And uh, we'll vacuum out the, uh, the grinder down here and put in another charge of chips. And we'll see just how well the uh, the cyclone separator works. It's it's pretty amazing if you're not familiar with the concept. Basically, um, the suction from the vacuum is coming in at the top, and this side arm here is where you go off to your whatever you're trying to suck up dust, sawdust, whatever. It comes in here and it spins really really fast around the outside. It sets up a vortex because it's. This is offset here, the way it's attached. And centrifugal force throws the solids out to the outside. Where they hit the wall, 
and they lose velocity due to friction and they drop pretty much straight down into the can. And then you've got a counter rotating vortex of clean air that comes up the middle and goes off to your vacuum cleaner. So almost everything stays in here. There's no filters involved, there's no screens, no nothing. It's just centrifugal force from the cyclone separator. It's a beautiful thing. I'm glad I'm finally getting some use out of this thing after having it in storage for years. So, all right, let me glove up and we'll vacuum this out. And uh, these dust deputies are still made, by the way. You can still buy one. They're not that expensive. I know, because the company I work for, the CEO is pretty cheap. Everything we bought had to be inexpensive, so, you know, they're not that pricey. Okay, let me get the vacuum turned on over here. Get this up so it doesn't suck up a bunch of leaves. Alright, now we'll vacuum out the dust. There's a heat sink from an IC chip. What I really like about this, and I hope you can hear me, is that the, since there's no filter involved here, there's no loss of suction. I'll give you a look at the cyclone separator while I'm doing this. Can you see the stuff coming down on the side of it there? Yeah, since there's uh, no uh, no filter involved, there's no loss of suction as the filter gets plugged up with dust, which was a, I was a problem I was having before with the smaller shop vac. So I got all the dust out of here. You can see all the balls in there now. A lot of them were were lost in the dust because there was a lot of dust in there. As you as you convert these things into smaller and smaller pieces, the volume goes up. There's another copper heat sink. I'm, I'm going to throw that one in. That one got a heat sink? No. Okay. So I'm going to load this up with some more incinerated chips and let it run for another two hours. Two hours seems to be the uh, sweet spot. Oh, no heat sink there either. Good. And uh, yeah, that seems to be the sweet spot for getting a really good grind out of this thing. Alright, here we go. Put the lid on. Screw it down tight. I won't start it yet because it's quite loud, especially once you put a fresh load of chips in it. It's super loud for about the first 10 minutes until it really starts pulverizing those chips into dust. Then the sound goes down quite a bit. But the reason I'm not going to start it is because I'll open this up and we'll take a look inside and see what's going on inside the dust deputy. Okay, I've got the hoses disconnected. This open that. Whoa, okay. Yeah, there's the dust. Yeah, a lot of the really fine stuff is staying in here. I'm a little bit surprised about that. I was thinking that the finer stuff would go through to the main vacuum, which is why I put a brand new bag in it. And I'm not going to use this vacuum for anything else for a while. 
until I'm done vacuuming up all of the dust, the IC chip dust out of this, uh, this setup I've got going on here. Yeah. So. Let's see here. Something to dig with. Here's a spoon. Yeah, it looks like most of it's going in here. What's that? That's a leaf. I did manage to suck up a leaf. Okay. But it looks like most of it's going in here. That is a huge volume of material. That probably represents four four times I've vacuumed out the thing, I guess, up now. So it looks like most of the dust is going in here and not going over to the main shop back. Although what I will have to do is I'll have to sift this out and see what percentage of the bond wires are in it versus whatever's in the uh, the bag in that. I'll have to uh, empty out that bag, sift it out, and see if there's any bond wires in it. I'm hoping, hoping against hope, that all the bond wires end up in here because that's going to make for easy processing and I won't have to worry about what's in the big shop back. So we'll see how that works out. I'm going to continue processing my IC chips until I run out of incinerated IC chips and then I will work on you know trying to figure out what's where here between these two um, devices. Like I say I'm hoping most of it's in here but uh, it's going to be a while before I figure it out. Alright so that's how I get the dust out of this thing these days. Now I'm getting a lot of comments from people about I should be running this wet. And, well, that will be an interesting experiment. I think in the future I will try running it wet and see how that does. But uh, for now I've got this set up and I'm going to keep running it dry and uh, until I run out of uh, IC chips to run through it and I'll process those the, the dry material and uh, see how that goes. But in the future, yeah, I may run it wet. Um, maybe I can put a screen over a five gallon bucket or something and just dump everything out of it, catch the balls, catch the big bits of, uh, of metal and uh, heat sink or whatever, and uh, wash everything into the bucket and I'll have a nice wet slurry for, uh, for further processing. So that's coming down the road. Watch for yet more updates on this grinder, but I'm going to have to incinerate some more IC chips because I'm almost out. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video at least a little bit interesting, educational, killed some time, whatever. Give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see future videos, and check out my second channel, ElectroGeek64. There's interesting stuff there, too. And uh, press the little bell icon that YouTube makes you press, both places, to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And we're up and running again.